In this video, I want to do an example where we get to use Fubini's theorem in its stronger form to evaluate a double integral. And one of the first things we'll have to do is pick the limits of integration. And this is the process we will always use. We draw our region, and I've drawn two different pictures here, one where I would integrate with respect to y and then x, and then one where I would integrate with respect to x and then y. And then we're supposed to draw an array through the region in the increasing direction of the first variable of integration. So in the increasing direction of y, the dot dot dots um, is where I should have written that where we enter the region becomes our lower limit of integration, that function, and where we exit becomes our upper limit of integration. So for functions that, are, that model a top and a bottom, I have a bottom function and then a top function. If I integrate with respect to x first, I need to think about a left function and a right function, but I still draw a ray in an increasing direction of x, and I enter and exit the re region. I pick my bounds for the second variable based on values that would include the whole region. I like thinking about that as values that would include every possible ray I could send through the region. Fubini's theorem in its second form gives me a choice. I can integrate with respect to y and then x, or x and then y. Based on that choice, I need to be thinking either left function, right function, or top function, bottom function. And some regions, like the ones I drew here, could be described either way. And in the example we're getting ready to do, it's going to be one of those where we could actually do it in either way. Though sometimes we will need to think about in which order the integration will be easier. And in one example we'll do in a different video, we'll have to think about in which order the integration is even possible. Later on, we might have more complicated regions where I'd have to break them apart and do different integrals and add the results using a property called additivity, but we'll see that later on as well. For now, here's an example. We are asked to integrate 3 minus y dA over the region R, where R is the, all the points on the interior of the circle x squared plus y squared is 4. So one way to write that down is this, right? The circle centered at the origin with a radius of 2. All right, so right away we see that I could think top half, bottom half, or left half, right half. I'd like you to pause the video here and pick an order of integration. I'm going to do it both ways. I'm certainly going to talk about which way I think was easier, but I want you to go on and make a choice. After you've made your choice, try following the procedure to find the limits of integration. Okay, so I am going to first integrate with respect to y and then x. So I draw a ray through the region in increasing order of y, and I need to think about a bottom function and a top function. So if I imagine this as an equation rather than an inequality, I can take x squared away from both sides, take a square root, and I get the top half and bottom half of a circle. So here is my iterated integral. I first hit the minus square root, and then I hit the principal square root function. 3 minus y with respect to y and then x. And now I need to have my second variable's limits. I need y values that would include every possible ray. Well, that would be from minus 2 to positive 2. And so now I see limits of integration, and I can proceed just by evaluating this iterated integral. Fairly easy antiderivative to find here. And these are y equals. And then I'll still need to integrate with respect to x. All right, so I have a minus 1 half y squared. And when I evaluate that, that's going to work out fairly nicely. Um, and then I'll have a 3 times this, right? So I have a 3y, so excuse me, a 3 times root 4 minus x squared. And you can pause the video here and go on and see if you can simplify that. I'm going to hop to another board 
after you unpause it and have gone on and simplified this. All right, I'm hoping that you found out that simplified very nicely to be six times the integral from minus two to two of the square root of four minus x squared. And so now I have to integrate this, and this is one of those problems I always tell my Calc 2 students never to do anything too fancy on, uh, because this is really just an area problem. It's asking me to find the area of the circle, excuse me, the area of the top half of a circle um, of radius two centered at the origin. So, you know, it's just a nice, happy pi r squared problem. So the area of the whole circle would be four pi. So the area of the top half that this is describing would be two pi, and my final answer will just be 12 times pi. So we've evaluated our double integral, and we did it by first integrating with respect to y. Now I'd like to set up the problem by integrating with respect to x and then y. So I need to draw an arrow through the region in increasing order of the first variable. This time will be x. I'll get a left function and a right function this time. My integrand certainly wouldn't change, so 3 minus y dx dy. And this time, I'd be thinking about solving for the other variable. Which I actually need to solve for the other variable if I'm going to say that. So x is equal to plus or minus square root of 4 minus y squared. A left function and a right function. As x increases, I hit the left function and then the right function, the one where all the x's are negative and then the one where all of the x's are positive. And then the bounds that would include all such rays from minus two to two with respect to y. All right, so it doesn't look too shockingly different but I realize now that when I go to integrate this with respect to x, three minus y is a constant. In fact, I could imagine writing that in front of the first integral and writing it between the two iterated integrals because, well, it's a constant. But I'm just gonna say that it's antiderivative because it's a constant would just be three minus y times x. And I need to evaluate from minus four minus y squared to positive square root of four minus y squared. and then. I'll still be integrating with respect to y in a moment. Well, if I plug this in, I'll get 3 minus y times this thing. If I plug this thing, I get minus that. Well, there's going to be a minus from the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2. Uh, so I'll end up with just two of those things. So I'll end up with this integral. Ooh. Hang on just a second. Apparently, I had something left over on this last board from a different lesson. We're not going to let that slow us down. All right, so I'd have the integral from minus 2 to 2 of 2 times 3 minus y times the square root of 4 minus y squared, which I'm going to choose to write as two different integrals. Two times 3 is 6 times the square root thing. minus the integral from minus 2 to 2 of 2y times 4 minus y squared dy. So now I have two integrals to do, deal with, and right now I have a feeling some folks watching this video are saying, well, I definitely like the other way better. But this integral is actually really simple to deal with. This is an even function times an odd function. So the integrand itself is an odd function over a symmetric interval, it's going to be zero. And you can do a u substitution on it and actually prove that it is zero, but I'm happy with the argument about the odd function um, because that's just cool. And then this is six times an integral that is really just an area calculation. 
Again, this would be the right side of a circle of radius two. So again, that, that integral is two pi times six is 12 pi. And so I get the same value using either process. And of course, that's really what Fubini's theorem in its second form are telling me, that I could model the region either way and they're the same double integral.